Welcome to episode two of Craft Chocolate TV. My name is Dylan Butterbaugh, and today we're going to talk about roasting, the second most important part of making good chocolate. So when I roast, it's all about conduction and convection, which is heat and airflow. And depending on where the beans come from, this is gonna determine how long or how hot you roast for. This is a coffee roaster. We roasted a much lower temperature and we made a slight modification. We added a motor that would change the speed at which this drum rotates, which is about half as fast as normal. We roast anywhere between 240 and 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Lately, because of the beans I'm working with, we're roasting closer to 240 to 260 degrees Fahrenheit because I want to keep more of the flavor. Now, if I have beans that are very acidic, I'm going to end up roasting lighter for as long as 45 minutes to try and mellow the acidity, say Tanzania, Coco Camille, for example. I'm going to roast 240 to 245 for 45 minutes to mellow that acid and then make sure I develop the chocolate flavors and I volatilize enough of that off. Whereas the Esmeraldas beans from Ecuador that we work with, I'm going to roast more around 255, potentially up to 260 degrees Fahrenheit and try and get more base chocolate out of them. They, they tend to lend themselves better. And this is roasting according to what I like, what I think tastes good as a finished chocolate bar. So we'll load about 15 kilos up here. The roaster is actually made for 12 kilos of coffee, but we can get 20% more cacao seeds in the roaster. So 15 kilos goes up here. I drop everything in, which takes a minute or so, and then it'll spin in there and uh, toward the end of the roast, I will be tasting the beans to know if it's ready or not. You make sure you have a timer. I try and get the temperature up over 200 as fast as I can because once it hits to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, that's when things really start to roast. Everything spills out onto this tray, cools off in about 10 minutes, and we can take it to the next steps. But this really is the second most important thing a chocolate maker can do to get a good quality chocolate bar. If you have two different chocolate makers and the same bag of beans, you are definitely gonna notice a five minute difference in roast or a different machine. I mean, the numbers I just gave you, that works well for me on this machine, this San Franciscan coffee roaster. On a different roaster, you're gonna get very different results. So you gotta keep that in mind. Ovens are another way. When we first started, we were using things like uh, perforated tray pans spinning inside of a barbecue. That worked very different than this. The oven, we have to roast much hotter and uh, it's not as easy. So I really like this type of roasting for my style. A couple last things to leave you with is roasting is the second most important step. Sourcing is the first and most important part of making good quality chocolate. We can only make as good a chocolate as the beans we start with. Roasting comes after that and it's a quick process, but extremely important. Now, when we roast, we lose about 5% of the total weight from moisture escaping. And it makes it much easier to winnow and it also makes it taste a lot more chocolate, like chocolate. It's also a kill step for certain um, bacterias that you might want to kill. There's things like salmonella and E. coli that are often found on raw beans. In the craft chocolate world, it's not as much of a problem because the beans are so much better taken care of. So thank you so much for watching the second episode of Craft Chocolate TV. See you next time. Thank you.